Hey YouTube, Sam here. Well, why are we looking at the passenger side tire and front end of this uh, O2 Buick Rendezvous? Well, if you remember a while back, I took that tire off and got under there to do the belt. Uh, part of the reason why I did that, although I do still think it was easier to get the belt on and off that way, really you don't need to. Um, I'll show you a tool that really made a difference when I was messing with this. But beyond that, you'll remember that the harmonic balancer or crank pulley, whatever you want to call it, um, was, I thought, wobbling quite a bit. Well, uh, I checked it, tried to mess with it, didn't really notice anything. And then after I did that, the brand new belt shredded, which I believe I have another video on that. I'm not positive if I've put that up yet but I believe I have another video on that and the story behind that. So then the other day we've been driving it for a while everything seems fine we actually I just put the old belt back on it and left it there because I was tired of messing with it and uh, it seemed like everything was doing fine and the belt flew off and made a horrible squealing noise while we were in the middle of uh, picking up some drive-through food uh, so it was kind of embarrassing but regardless I can show you now the reason why I've been having belt problems and if you're having belt problems probably the reason why you're having belt problems and I've already looked up some stuff on this car and uh, it appears that this is actually something that's fairly common on the 3400 uh, it, the Pontiacs, Buicks, um, whatever this is in they, there's several of them that have had this problem. I have not seen a ton of videos but it does seem to be there's a couple of them out there and it does seem to be a fairly common problem with this car or this type this motor I should say rather than the car. Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is jack it up get the tire off start pulling all the stuff on the inside out. Pretty much everything I did to change the belt I'm gonna be doing the same thing to get to that point. So if you can't figure it out uh, for yourself, go check out my video where I replace the serpentine belt on my O2 Buick Ron. And here we are underneath here. There's a couple of screws you got to pull out to take this panel off. I'm not sure if it's attached to this panel somehow, but broke away. But it doesn't actually look like it. It looks like you can just take. There's just a, a square panel there under the gloves, uh, a couple of clips, and then you get right to it. Uh, we're in front of, towards the front of the car here. Um, so you kind of have an idea where you're at but here's the problem right there that lip that's right there that's got the black part that goes into here that shouldn't be there that should be totally flush with that and uh, as you can see the uh, belt is now no longer riding on there uh, hopefully you can see that there we go it's just barely riding on there and that's why my belt uh, flipped out. I think what happened is uh, when I put it back on the last time somehow it wobbled, wobbled, I can't say that word, wobbled uh, back in for a while and then finally started creeping back out again and caused this problem. There's the, so you can tell that that's on that pulley right there and it's not on right here. So that should be flush like I said. So we got to get on there. I believe that is a 15 millimeter. I have air. If you don't have air, uh, you're going to have to figure out a way to hold that from moving. Uh, there is some transmissions. I don't know on this one, but from things I've seen, you can go up underneath uh, and there's a plastic cover you can take off, put a pry bar or a large screwdriver in there to keep the flywheel from turning. Uh, and I would strongly recommend undoing your battery, probably undoing your coil, uh, whatever you have to do to keep this thing from starting on accident. Not very likely to happen, but if it did, there could be some serious bad things happening when you start pulling this off uh, or cranking on this. But 15 millimeter, pop that out. Like I said, I'm using air, so hopefully I'll be able to get it out fairly easy. Well, 
Now we have to get the tool. And here is the tool you need. Looks something like that. Um, it's also it's made for steering wheel puller is what this one is but it also is built for this type of deal and you want to make sure that you have this kind of pulley you don't want to go in here with jaws and try and pull things um, from what people say anyway that can mess things up these are fairly cheap uh, and I don't know what size bolts these are that go in here so you'll have to kind of figure that out for yourself but this is going to go on there nope I have it backwards put the flat side out here hopefully these are long enough to make a, enough threads on here and I don't pull them out I just kind of went through my bolt drawer and found what I could find we shall see I was going to just put the I got a couple ends for this and I was going to just put that on there and go for it but I think there's enough room to put the little foot on there there's a little foot that goes on the end of that so I'm going to pull this off get it all set up and uh, then I'll be back all right we got it all set up here hopefully tighten down right now I'm going to start trying to do this by hand if I can so I have a better feel for it I was able to use that end piece when I get this out and on a table I will give you a better look at kind of the setup maybe um, if I find that I need to and this is going to start turning which I was afraid of so quite honestly yet again I'm going to go the impact route just because I have it you may really really want it and if you're working on cars a lot investing in a good impact gun and an air compressor is a pretty good idea if not the harbor freight and a lot of other impact guns that are electric seem to get good reviews the only thing i find with them is they're large they're kind of big when you got to be in a smaller area but so is a good impact uh, air impact not quite as large so we'll see almost went the wrong way we'll see if this works this you just got to be real careful yet again not responsible if you do anything I do all right I threw some penetrating oil on here hopefully this thing will slide off now belt is probably holding it on or at least belt. trying to loose here now don't know if that was holding it or if I have a problem or if it's coming loose and I'm just not noticing it too much but all right, there she blows all right and there it is and I'll be honest I actually had it it was I couldn't see this part when I put it on and it's kind of sticking up a little ways more here so I probably should have moved this down a little bit to where it was rubbing on this side so I had it a little bit of an angle but either way this tool works this is the tool you need to pull it off I do not have the tool I need to put it on I will be making one of those probably but that all in all is what I what it looks like and that right there should not be sticking up Here's the new um, one right here that is the part for my rig part number i got it on amazon i don't know if it was cheaper or not they were all pretty close to the same price no matter what you got so Dorman seems to be a pretty good product um warning telling you to read the instructions so you should probably do that but as you can see when i peel that off of there this is right along with this this is way down in here so if you are having a problem with your belts breaking or falling off or you notice this wobbling some probably starting to turn into that and it should look like that so we're gonna go ahead and slap that back on all right a little side note here i peeled that off and just threw it to the side luckily it landed up just like it did this time 
And on there, that little piece, is the gel pack, which doesn't really matter, but right here is a key, a uh, keyway. So, make sure you don't do what I just did and almost throw it away. Yeah. Do what they call it. But, anyhow, don't throw that away. That, right there, needs to probably go right in there. And we've got to pop the other one out. So, just so you know. And here I am back with the tool. Um, now, I tried, I was going to build the homemade tool like a lot you see a lot of people doing online or on YouTube. Um, but honestly, I couldn't find the right pitch thread and long enough bolt, all that stuff. By the time I would have drove around, I'm trying to finding things. Uh, I decided to go to Harbor Freight first of all, uh, but I forgot my phone so I didn't have my 20% off thing so I was going to come home and get that and go buy the tool. This was around a little over 20, this was a little under 20 somewhere, I don't know exactly at Harbor Freight. I already own this, but um, to buy those at Harbor Freight they're, they're fairly inexpensive like I was saying. Um, but on my way home I thought, you know what, I'm going to go to O'Reilly's and rent a tool. And I always kind of forget about that. And, I, and I've done it several times and I've even talked about it on other YouTube videos. Uh, they have all the tools you need. They have this, they have this. You go basically buy the tool. This was like 50 bucks there. Um, and then you bring it back and they give you your money back. You don't even spend any money at all. So you get a free tool to use for a day. Anyhow, so I went and grabbed this instead of spending any money on anything or trying to drive around ma making a tool, which in hindsight is just a way better idea. Um, now, if you were doing this all day, every day, and needed this tool, then yeah, go buy it. It's 50 bucks at O'Reilly's, 20 something at Harbor Freight. They're not that expensive. Um, anyhow, we're going to put this one together and uh, do this. So comes with a kind of a longer bolt that's been all bunged up from people misusing it. That goes into here. The one we need for this car is the 12 by 1.5. That goes down into there and then this screws on to that. Except for people who have not screwed it on far enough so it doesn't go all the way down. This is why this is the one thing about renting stuff is that you end up with bunged up stuff here that people see that should go almost all the way up into here somehow and people just don't don't take care of stuff that's not theirs if you're that kind of person you're kind of a jerk anyway hopefully we're going to make this work i'm going to go ahead and put this in a vise and screw it down as far as i can well there it's going now it's just not wanting to you want that in there as much as you possibly can. This is going to go down into your uh, where your pulley is, which I would like a longer one here, personally. And you could use the bolt that comes with it and jam it on in there, but you take a chance of bunging up the threads on the end of your bolt. So that's why they, they make these tools. Then, I believe this goes... Yep, this will go on here. This goes on here, like that. I'm hoping you can see all this. And basically, you put that in there, thread this on, and this pushes your pulley on One of the there. first things we need to do so, is actually get up in here and get this key right here out of here, because I'm gonna pop that out and use the new key that comes with it. Quite honestly, I have been fighting this. I got this old, I don't know what it is. It's a bar. I'm kind of zoomed in a little bit. But I kind of put a tip on it with my grinder. And I've gone in here and I've been banging at it with that because I screwed it up too much now to uh, be able to reuse. So I got to get it out of there and reuse my, or use the one that came with the kit. Honestly, this is what you should do. You should get that out of there and use the one that came in the kit. But if I knew what a pain in the butt it was going to be, I probably would have just reused the one that was in there. I don't think it didn't look like it was banged up at all. problem with that is it's a shear key. It's made to break and shear off in case of a problem. 
and then you replace it so it's better to have the new one in there well i got it out but not without killing that bearing so um or that seal i don't think it, i don't know if it's a bearing or if it's just a seal this outer seal here so i get to go look into finding something to pull that with oh so i got um, this little tool here i believe it's actually for windows for uh pulling clips on windows is what it's actually for but it's kind of got a similar shape to a lot of seal pullers yet again use what you feel necessary to use to get this thing out of here i'm tearing it up getting it out of here and i'm tearing the tool up trying to it's get it out of this here one is what this in here both you got to be careful we're not screwing that the outside of that up but also it's in the way of like your normal seal puller type tool so trying to get in there and and get a hold of something can be really oh, difficult. so far this is and the scenario that, i've come to i got my little slide hammer it's got like a little screw on there it's kind of like the old school body trick i don't know if you can see that but i've drilled a couple holes in this screwed that in and then we can slide back on this i hope and uh pop this out we'll see Ta-da! I only needed to drill one hole and it came right out. So these little things, yet again, fairly cheap. Bought this probably at a pawn shop 20 years ago, uh, and it's been really, really handy for everything from body work to also, this kind of stuff. Also, because we drilled uh, in there, we're going to need to go in there and clean things up really, really well. Quite honestly doing that or if you can get this out fairly easy you really should replace this anyway well, i got my new seal it's about six bucks at the store here now i'm going to take and i'm going to put just a little bit of grease all the way around it i'm just using like wheel bearing grease you can use what you think is necessary you don't need a whole lot um I am actually going to take a little bit and just kind of go around this as well just to kind of lube it up so that when we go to stick things in we don't booger it up as well and then you want to stick it on in there close as you can I already clean I cleaned the inside of that up with some brake clean as well and a rag and a little screwdriver just to kind of uh, get all the gook and stuff out of there and then I'm taking my tiny ball peen hammer here and I'm whoop, just carefully gonna go around this well I can make anything look difficult I'm hoping this is the right size one it's the one that part store gave me Now you can kind of hear it going. I'm just kind of barely tapping on it to get it in there. And then once I get it in there, I'm hoping this socket, yep, I got a good size socket there. Honestly, you're in my way again. And I don't know where to put you where you're not in my way. So uh, I'm going to tap that in there. I'm going to get this. And probably maybe a little bit of a 2 by 4 or something on the end of it where I can get to it. But you'll Still see in. it when it's in. I'm hoping not too far. It does seem like it went past that. And I can't remember what was in there further. But it does seem like it goes past where it would be solid with that. So once again, hopefully I didn't booger something up. And once again, I'm going to use a little bit of grease on the key here and put that in there um, hopefully that'll kind of hold that in there because even though it was difficult to get out these things will tend to not want to stay in at the same time and I'm hoping I shouldn't have probably put this maybe in first very well could be well that's kind of a well, bummer went and got a new seal now here's the problem i went ahead and put this new seal in six dollars right there but 
uh, what I didn't know, and I've done these before and it's been a long time, but I've never done one on this rig. You need to put the key in first because you are not going to get this down in there with the seal and into this space that it needs to go into uh, with, with that seal in there. So we are going to put that in now. I am going to have to go buy another another seal. And I'm not sure. That doesn't want to go in either way. Well, YouTube, uh, you know, again, not going to lie to you. That was a bugger to get in there. And what it wound up being is when I pulled the other one out using that, uh, that chisel thing, basically, is what I used. Uh, it's not exactly what it was, but I think it's like an old broken tire iron that I cut the end off of and use it kind of like a chisel but anyway i nicked the crankshaft up a little bit and so this piece would not go into here uh no matter how hard i tried so i wound up taking a file with some grease on it so hopefully i don't get too many metal chips down in there and i filed it down until it finally went in there and I'm not gonna lie as well I did have to tap on it a little bit with a hammer to get it in there so I'm hoping everything all in all is okay um, we shall see the next thing I need to do is put the seal in so once again I'm gonna take some brake clean and a rig and try and brake clean up that uh where the seal goes there and since I already showed you putting that seal in once uh, I'm either gonna put that in right now or it'll be in earlier when I did this before did it the same way it's all in there uh, yet again I started out making it flush but then I noticed that some of this kinda looks kinda wore down so I went ahead and put the seal down in there further. I'm hoping that's how it was. I should have paid more attention before I pulled the old seal out, but I didn't, so that's where we're going. Now, finally, after a couple days worth of stupidity, mostly on my part, admittedly, uh, we can put the pulley on here. Now, I did put some grease, kind of so light greasing. Whoop not hit you of stuff here uh, on the shaft here and uh, you do not want to take a hammer and bash this in first of all second of all go get the tool for free that I've already probably shown you and that should go on down in there as far as it'll allow you to put it in see here that feels about right and then back it off just a little bit uh, so you don't have any binding and stuff like that and this piece goes on there and this on here and then I got to get a wrench to go on this and a wrench to go on this got to hold this side tighten this one go with the crescent wrench on this one because it'll kind of come down here and hit on things so I don't have to hold this the whole time too awful much at least it'll help me hold it and then this one is a one and a quarter is what I have here um, to put it on with so we are going to crank it down with that if you don't have this size you can definitely uh, use a crescent wrench on this too but since I got it, might as well use it. Rarely get to use this wrench for a whole lot. And I'm going to check and make sure from all angles here, things look like they're going in where they're supposed to be going in. And they appear to be. So we're still pretty happy with what's going on so far. Tell you, this car and me 
Don't know what it is about this car. Uh, it just, everything I touch on it, something goes wrong. Every time you try and work on something, this is one of the first things I've been able to actually reach fairly easy. And it still was a pain in the rear. And uh, I'll tell you, it, it's not, this wasn't the car. This was more me, admittedly. Uh, but this car is always a pain to work on because you have to tear half the car apart to get half the other parts. I would highly recommend not buying a Buick Rendezvous. At least the O2. Uh, okay. So this should, this actually does have a, a solid, more solid side right here that should butt up against there and stop things from happening. So we are going to put her back on and keep on going. We've got a little ways to go, not too far. So that's something you do need to think about that this actually needs to be able to turn inside there. So there's a side that has kind of a open side and a side that's flat on the other side. And I put a little bit of Loctite on the bolt here and I am going to probably, yep. This is supposed to be put down to 52 foot pounds according to my instructions. Uh, I am going to have to put a extension on my uh, wrench here so that I can do that. You guys need to do your own research on this. It says some of the bolts you can reuse, some of the bolts you need to put a, a new one of these on. Mine did not come with a new one and it talked about if it came with a new one then it was a recall or something or another. Um, Mine didn't. I'm putting some orange Loctite, so it's supposed to be strong, but you can still removable. And uh, putting this bolt back on at 52 foot pounds. And then after that, it says to rotate it 72 degrees. Really don't know exactly how to do that, but we'll get her there. That's one of those things you need to figure out your uh, torque and you need to figure out what you want to do for your safety when cranking this down and I will do the same and this is going to turn on me <sighs> I'm debating on if I want to put the belt on even then it's probably going to turn so really don't want to climb underneath there and start messing with stuff right now So I know what I'm going to do. You need to decide what you're going to do. When I'm done, I'll be back. All right, YouTube. Well, this POS is on here, hopefully to stay. Um, I got on there. I looked. It looks like it's going to line up. I'm going to go ahead and run it, see if any horrible things happen. If no horrible things happen, there you go. This is, this is how to do that. But I made it, yet again, way harder than it needed to be. In fact, reading through the directions, it really it doesn't say anything about replacing that key. So the Woodruff key in there, honestly, you guys need to choose yet again to do what you want to do. If I had to do this all over again, I definitely would not have pulled that key out of there. I would have just pulled off the pulley and put the new one on. Actually, I probably, knowing what I know now too, would have went ahead and replaced that seal. It was fairly simple to replace. Um, so that would probably be a good idea too to replace the two things because really they do wear together um, so that's also up to you one it's six dollars to help hopefully keep some leaks down some so uh, in, in my opinion I would go ahead and change that out but the key I definitely wouldn't do it if I had to do it all over again and I told you I all would right. talk about this tool and then forgot about it so I thought I'd bring this in here 
Uh, I got this at Harbor Freight, $9.99. I think it was on sale. Thing is, is really solid. I'm actually pretty impressed by it. Um, it is from stem to stern all the way out, a little over 18 inches, right at 18 inches. Uh, breaker bar here, and it's the 3 8 uh, end on here. That's the trick. Now, I don't have the car here to show you anymore, but if you put this in, and your idler pulley is right here. You stick that into the hole. I've talked to you about that before on my belt when I did the belt. Put it directly in parallel with the car and then bring it up. Um, this worked really, really well to help get that belt on from the top because uh, I tried it out because I bought this specifically for that car because it was throwing belts. Uh, well, hopefully now I won't have that problem anymore, but we'll see. At least I have it. And I actually have been wanting one of these for quite a while. Yeah, so there you go. Now you know. A couple things. Um, if you buy that pulley that I just put on that you watched, um, you need to make sure that your, especially GM vehicles, it talks about needing a scanner to make it, you know, start learning or whatever. I tried my Autel scanner yet again. It did not work for what I needed it for. It didn't support this car. Um, but also, I read through these instructions here that's on this sheet that came with it. And if you read through that, basically um, it do all these steps and my car is running fine. There's no lights coming up. If there was a light, I can use my scanner for that. Um, but I've been driving it a couple days now and everything seems fine. Um, and basically the one thing that was maybe a little confusing to maybe some people, uh, let's see here. Basically it talked about uh, bringing the gas up till the fuel, till the scanner tells you the fuel shut off. I brought it up till it hit the, um, rev limiter and shut off which basically kills the the gas um and then let off the gas that's what i did it worked for me using all these steps and doing that may not work for you if you have a gm vehicle it depends on your vehicle so you're forewarned on that the other thing is it says tighten bolt to 70 nm i don't know what that is 52 foot pounds and then rotate the crankshaft balancer bolt and additional 72 degrees so i couldn't get it to rotate much more than the 52 foot pounds so i personally took my impact hit it once paid attention to where the bolt turned to and didn't quite take one full revolution basically of the bolt that was all i could do things seem to be working fine yet again you need to do your own research and i am not responsible if you do anything i do if you don't like the way i do it don't do it this is sam jack of all master none you all have a good one